right? Okay, cool. Oh, hey, guys. Um, uh, okay, is the time up? Okay, cool. Oh, that's my... Actually, I don't want to follow my slides, so maybe I'll just do something else. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, okay, this is great. Uh, cool. So, how was everyone's conference? Okay, can't wait to finish. Oh. How many people here are from Czech? Okay, I've, I've, I have to say this is my second time in Prague, and I really like it. I think last time I was staying in the touristy area, and all I saw was Chinese tourists, so I thought I came to Europe, but all I saw was my own people. Uh, but this time I actually saw <laughs> a diverse set of builders and found the river to be uh, very pleasant. Walked in the rain yesterday for two hours, uh, saw some castles, so really love your country. Also, what surprised me the most is you guys have actually really good Chinese food. I think Sabrina would disagree with me. Uh, but I went to this restaurant called Basu last night. Anyone has been there? Okay, so if you want like spicy Chinese food, I think it, it was pretty good. Um, anyway, so uh, my name is Xu Yao, uh, Xu Yao Kong. I joined, uh, I joined crypto in 2017 uh, with Consensus. So the company that built MetaMask, Infura and uh, Linia, which is our ZKEVM. How many people here use this MetaMask? Okay, D does it suck? Yeah, okay, so um, I was leading uh, global business development at Consensus for six years. So I look young, but I'm actually really old. Um, so when I was at Consensus, right, I was doing business development for MetaMask, and we always get questions from users. Uh, I don't know how many people here submitted tickets, but we actually run a pretty good uh, customer service for MetaMask. So people always submit tickets, something like, you know, I like lost my seed phrase, which happens a lot. But also sometimes it's like my transaction doesn't go through. What's happening? So my experience was like the user complained to MetaMask, and MetaMask tried to troubleshoot, and it turned out to be a problem for Infura. Right, Infura, which is uh, RPC uh, middleware. And Infura like, no, it's not my fucking problem, it's the chain's problem. So we had to go to the chain. And what happened is that Polygon is fucked. So, <laughs> so my experience with crypto has always been the user complain, you go to the middleware, and then at the end, it's always the chain's fault. And this is why I think as, for Ethereum as a community, we still haven't solved the chain issue. And this is what brings me to um, Mega East. Uh, which is a new Ethereum layer 2 that is actually secretly, secretly the real Solana. And in fact, I always tell people, we are Solana Solana, because Solana explores the physical limits of machines, but we have fucking centralized sequencer, so we are really reaching the physical limits of a machine, while still remaining the balance of the Ethereum security and decentralization. So that's a nutshell of uh, Mega East. Uh, anyone came here knowing Mega East already? Oh, I know. Oh, wait. What do you know about Mega East, sir? It's pretty optimized material for the machine. Yeah. Which basically, like, some of the steps which are, like, in the pipeline are, like, not used. There's, like, a lot of optimization. Yeah, all I heard was optimizations, which is good. We have a lot of optimizations. But um, allow me to go back to why Ethereum Layer 2 is a perfect venue to optimize. So I don't assume everyone here is, is Maxi. I mean, we all use Solana. I made money from Whiff. I hope you did too. <laughs> but the problem with layer one is you can never scale as a layer one, right? The issue is layer one always has one issue, which is called the strangler's problem. Anyone here knows the strangler's problem? All right, allow me to explain, because I didn't know this before, but my co-founders who are PhD from uh, Stanford and MIT, they taught me. So the strangler's problem is actually very common in distributed network. So when you're layer one, your node has to do three things at the same time. Consensus, execution, data availability. So the, when the node has to do three things at the same time, your performance is dependent on the lowest performing node. That's why a layer one can never scale, because you're trying to do too many things at the same time. 
So imagine you have a race with a bunch of rabbits. So Mega is our, uh, our, uh, our um, uh, meme is a rabbit because my co-founder, uh, Lei, who uh, went to MIT, uh, he really likes rabbit. So he, he literally goes to this parking slot in MIT and he just like feeds uh, rabbits. Uh, so we feel like we have to adopt a rabbit as a, as a culture for, for our team. So suppose you have a race, right? You have a bunch of rabbits and all the rabbits is hitting the finishing line. If you are layer one, your transaction cannot process unless all the rabbits finish the race. And that means the slowest rabbit, right, maybe due to many reasons, it's finishing very late. Everybody else has to wait. And that's where you have strangler's problem. That's why you have repeatable work. And that's why layer one can never scale. So anyone who build a layer one, I think they just want to make money. Because otherwise, like, you should build a layer two if you actually want to build something performant. So now layer one cannot scale. So I'm sorry to anyone who here invests in another layer one uh, because it's not going to work. So why layer two work, right? And this is the magic of Mega East. We are using this technology called node specialization. What does it mean? Recall in layer one, your node has to do three things at the same time. As a layer two, Voila, every node is differentiated. So each node can specialize in one thing. So we have a node that specializes in sequencing, and we optimize the fucking hell out of it by a bunch of things like parallelization, um, in-memory compute, we rewrote the whole state tree. And you have one node for consensus, which can be either optimistic or zero-knowledge proof. And then you have one node for data availability. So when you have node specialization, your performance is not depending on the slowest moving node. Because each node is optimized, and no matter how slow the rabbit, so what you're doing is you empower each rabbit to run at its fastest. And you're not bottlenecked by how many, how all the rabbits across the finishing line together. So each rabbit can cross its own finish line, and your network still works. This is the power of Mega ETH. So if there's one thing you want to take away is Mega ETH out Solana, Solana. And the reason Mega ETH out Solana, Solana is because we have node specialization. So when I was uh, coming for ETH Prague, um, the organizer asked me like, oh, like, which stage do you want to be? Like, you should be on infrastructure stage. I was like, oh my God, I'm so tired of infrastructure. Like, everyone is building infrastructure. I don't know, it's just like everyone's kissing EF's ass, trying to get advisory share. Everyone is building decentralized sequencer, but I mean, honestly, as a layer two, you're supposed to trust the operator. Like, why do you want decentralized as a layer two? You shouldn't, you should trust the Ethereum mainnet, right? Uh, as a way for security and decentralization. So I chose this stage because I think the reason we built Mega ETH is to actually empower dApps. How many of you guys are building a dApp here? Oh, I'm surprised, okay, it's quite a lot. Because um, I think Ethereum really faces the problem isn't to build a better protocol, it's actually build a protocol that allows more people like you guys to build innovative solutions. So now with Mega ETH via our node specialization, we can achieve 100,000 TPS and some millisecond latency. So what does it mean, right? Solana max TPS is 4,000. Base, I think I max with 140. You're, you're shaking your head. Okay, tell me, Habibi. Like, it's gonna be easier, like 8,000. In, in reality, because I'm like running Solana motivated, so I see that. So, but you have developed the hardware. Yeah. yeah, like the hardware is pretty good. Yes. I so I think at the end of the year, Solana is gonna have a, a, a new upgrade, right? With fire dance and all of that. Let's say 10K. Solana is 10K. Monad is 10K real TPS. But with mega ETH optimization, no specialization, we can get 100K. And especially with the latency, right? We achieve some millisecond latency because we are having a centralized sequencer. Centralization is good. That's how we out Solana, Solana. And for reference, Solana has 400 millisecond sequencer, uh, latency, correct? For a block, yeah. Yes. Um, Arbitrum actually has, has uh, 265 milliseconds. It's actually pretty good. I don't know why they don't talk about it enough. Uh, we have some millisecond 
second latency. What does it mean? It means like it gives you the same experience as Web2. So when we're talking about mega East ecosystem and the type of dApps and devs we want to attract, we're actually attracting people who have built for internet scale. I'll give you an example. Uh, we've been running an incubation program in Berlin last uh, month. I literally rented a hotel <laughs> in Berlin. <laughs> And then I flew all potential uh, dApp developers to Berlin. So we work during the day, we go to club at night. My favorite experiences is I got rejected by Burkhan and Sisyphus and a bunch of others. I guess I'm just like not that cool. Um, so we put everybody together and most of our devs are actually not just e your typical EVM uh, devs, right? A lot of our devs come from like Google and Amazon. And the only reason they're attracted to Mega East is because for the first time, they can build a dApp as if they're building in Web2 because of our scalability. And that's something we're truly unlock. So now I welcome you to think about some use cases that's only possible on Mega ETH. So the usual DeFi, I'm interested, but I think you maybe got like 5x improvement, not a huge improvement. So DEX on Mega ETH is a combination of AMM and Club very easily. Club actually didn't work on Solana, prove me if I were wrong. And our perps, fully on-chain perps, and that's not an app chain. App chain is a fixed thesis, and you can fight with me after this, this conversation. But think about lending protocol, right? You can, because our chain is so fast, 100,000 TPS and some millisecond latency, you can ha actually have micro liquidation. So you actually don't have bad debt on our lending protocol. You can have real-time prediction market, right? Think about watching the TV show Love Islands. I don't know anyone watch Love Island. Maybe it's American reference. Anyone watch Love Island? OK, what's a popular TV show that's very junky in Czech? Involves a lot of drama? God, you guys don't do this? Friends? Friends? Do you do? I mean, you came from the 1990s, I feel like. <laughs> uh, but, but I think about uh, you're watching a live reality TV show, and you can like, bet on things with your friends real time. So, um, and then um, think about a launch, a launch pool, right? Like, sorry. I think about a launch pool, you can not only like long uh, meme coin, you can also short a meme coin, and the liquidation just works very differently. But I think about having a consumer uh, fully on chain autonomous world. Um, anyone here is familiar with the autonomous world group? Uh, I think they're like the coolest, actually, um, crypto consumer developers. Uh, I, I actually got to learn them because, uh, I mean, now they're building a, a mega ETH. So we have got this team. Um, they were Paradigm fellows. Paradigm like, has been trying to chase them to give them money. They're like, fuck this VCs. I don't know, maybe they're VCs in the audience. Fuck this VCs, we just want to build something good. And they were trying to build on optimism. It didn't work. But they're building like a fully on-chain Minecraft. I've never played Minecraft because I'm Chinese. My family you know, forbade me from playing games. But now I have to because it's part of my work. Uh, and I'm learning how to play, play Minecraft, right? And the beautiful thing about fully on-chain Minecraft is every block start to have economic value. Right? DeFi Summer used to work on just the decks. Imagine DeFi Summer works in a Minecraft. Imagine like you have a castle with your gold. And if you don't protect it, someone else is going to raid it. And in order to prevent, to keep it safe, you have to buy additional ether, buy additional, I don't know, slave or guard to, to protect it, right? So suddenly you're bringing everything on chain based on the physical limits. Like to me, that is where the next DeFi um, summer, I don't know, is it summer now, winter, should happen, right? But for autonomous world, it cannot happen on any other chain. Like the guy tried to build on optimism, arbitrum just doesn't work. It can only be built on mega ETH. And these are the depths I'm trying to work with. How much time do I have? Okay. So um, lastly, in terms of culture, right? I've been in Ethereum since 2017, did everything. I think Ethereum faces a problem. Like you can say, Vitalik always says, oh, it's like flourishes because a thousand flowers blooming. Sometimes I think it's, it, it's going to die because that's by a thousand cuts, right? And the thousands are the roll-ups. Um, what we are here to do is we are really performance driven. Everything we do from a design to community is actually think about bringing real consumers, like 
your typical Solana people who are pumping, well, trading meme coins and getting robbed, right? But these people is actually the people who are gonna adopt crypto. It's not everybody who sit here. Like, I mean, I think we're great, we're talking about research and all of that, but we have to have a team representing Ethereum that's actually user-focused and user-driven. And that's really what drives the Megalith team every day. We think about how to optimize the execution layer, we think about how to appear, uh, how to build dApps uh, that's consumer facing, and how to bring this like user focused culture to Ethereum. So I think that's it. Any questions? So I didn't use any of my slides, I just, I'm also drinking beer. So. Any question? Hi, thank you for the talk. I want to ask what are the trade offs? Like uh, you mentioned the centralization, that it's good, but there must be some, some trade-offs that you are aware yeah. of. Yeah, well, we're very aware of trade-offs. That's why we're saying we're performance first, right? Um, everything is a trade-off between performance and decentralization. But the trade-off is not a straight line. It's actually parental efficiency. We think we sit at the most parental efficient curve because only by being a layer two can you have performance while still have the Ethereum security. Because you can always have forced exit, right? When you have a transaction that can't go through layer two, you can force exit to layer one. The trade-off here we're making is the true censorship resistant, the true decentralization. But that's not equal to security. We have the Ethereum security, we don't have the Ethereum censorship resistant. But then as a layer two, you're not supposed to have Ethereum decentralization. You're supposed to trust the operator and be performance driven. So yes, we're taking the trade off in fully decentralization, but we are sacrificing a little bit decentralization for a lot of performance. I'll give you a counter example, which is Monad. Most people compare us with Monad because they're like mid curving us as a parallel EVM. Please don't meet Carvasa's parallel EVM with the real Solana. They're like, oh, guys, you're doing like little Monad on oh, Ethereum. It's just not true. And Monad is meat curving it because by being a layer one, they can never achieve the performance mega it does, right? Monad is always 10K TBS. Why? Strangler's problem. Their node has to do three things at the same time. But they cannot be as decentralized as Ethereum mainnet either. So they neither get performance nor do they get decentralization. So they're basically mid-curving it. So I'd like to call Monad a mid-curve parallel EVM. Sorry, that was our trade-off. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? But yeah, please follow us on Discord. Where, um, well, we raised $20 million from some evil VCs, but we're going to spend all of that money to, uh, to developers. If you're a builder, please come talk to me. If you're a protocol engineer, don't. Okay, we're good?